candy floss. Come, look at this. Oh, look. They're so cute, the kids here. They, if you offer them things, they don't take it. They, they're like, no, 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 no. Um, so you have to work on it. But then they, they go for it. Ah, oh, they're so cute. We are now visiting another megawatt place in Kabul called the Saki Shrine. 18th century, looks stunning. I've just caught a peek of it on our drive here. Uh, packed with history. Let's check it out. So this looks like a really big tourist place. Lots of tourists yeah, come. Lots of tourists, local tourists. And local and location. international. Yeah. Uh, and is it ticketed? How do you get in? Uh, we didn't need a ticket, we just shoot a permit here. Yeah, permit for Kabul, is that? Yeah. Okay, great. And, and that the gives same, us. We are allowed to go in. Oh, great. Okay, cool. The shrine is a place of pilgrimage for both Sunni and Shia Muslims, highlighting the cultural and religious diversity of Afghanistan. This place is certainly popular. The inside of the Saki Shrine is split in half, with one side for men, one for women. Now, my challenge showing you the inside is that I'm not allowed to film women, so filming my half would be impossible. So instead, I asked Mohammed Jan to head into the men's side with my phone to capture some footage to share with you. As you can see, the beautiful detail continues, and there are many inscriptions on the walls. On the men's side, there is this handprint, believed by many to be that of Hazrat Ali, the cousin and son-in-law of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. On the women's side, there's a small chamber which is associated with the same spiritual figure and women will often visit to seek prayers and offer blessings. Super cute. It's so beautiful. It's got all the colours. It's got the blues. It's got the oranges. It's got the greens. It's got the yellows. It's really detailed, really beautiful, and it's another reason why I think Islamic architecture is my favourite um, style of architecture. It's really, really pleasing on the eye. That was a lovely, lovely visit in uh, Kabul. It's obviously very popular here. There's lots of smiley faces. Everyone seems relaxed and happy, which is nice to see. Outside the shrine, we've got lots of like street food. It smells good, it smells good. <laughs> it smells nice. <laughs> Problem is, I got a bit of a dodgy stomach today. So I've just had a piece of bread this morning. Um, oh, it smells really nice. Look, I'd love to have a chai. Mohammed John, do you reckon I can have a green tea? Would that be okay? What's this man selling? What's this? Oh, here we go. Look, they always give it a little rinse out for you, which is great. But these look unusual. They got some. Ah, Tasha Kaur. Tasha Kaur. Uh, there's a kibata. Oh, no. Got the other one. Tea. Yes. Oh, Tasha Kaur. Thank you. Oh, oh, so Cheers. Thank you. See that? That is what. Uh, the true Afghan hospitality is all about. Just giving me a chai on the house. And that's what I want to take home. I've had real, like massive highs here and a few lows. Um, and the lows, unfortunately, will be like control related, Taliban related. But when you look at the Afghan people, you just, it reminds you why you want to visit this country. It's so nice. By the way, Mohammed John, what are these? This is yours. How much is it? Uh, yes, I'm selling these delicious. Yeah, no, my, I'm gonna. Uh, oh. Okay. I try. Yeah, yeah try. Eat, eat. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. I think this is what I was given in Pakistan. 
He's told me to put salt on it. Is it salt or sugar? Salt. Salt. He told me to put salt on it. This is what I was given in Pakistan by Raji. And as he gave me one, he told me it was sweet. <laughs> I bet with salt it's probably quite good. That's good. I like it. Yeah. Right. Let's give this a bow. That's really good. I'd like to give this man some money. Tashakur. 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 Yeah. He's very generous and he would have given me, I think, his entire stall. But I think that he deserves to have some money. Ch Chitorasti? Is he, is he speaking Farsi? Where's that big boy? Where is he gone? I think he's run away. Chitorasti. Does he speak, does he speak Farsi or Pashto? Yeah, he speaks Farsi. Yeah? Chitorasti. Where's he gone? He's hiding. Chitorasti. Who uh, was that? Who was that? That's what you're meant to say. I think he's forgotten his uh, language today, but he's really shy. <laughs> We've got some really famous gardens here, which we're going to go and see if we can visit. Let's have a look. We had come to visit the very peaceful Babur Garden. Whoa, this is huge. Oh, it looks beautiful. Remember, at the moment, local women have been banned from visiting parks, so you'll just see men with children. Oh dear, so I think somebody's fallen over. Whoopsie. It's normally a peaceful place. I, I, I actually can't believe this is Kabul. Kabul. <laughs> Kabul. <laughs> I never say it right, do I? Hello. 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 How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Oh, that's very good English. Very good. Oh. It's very educated. There were very educated kids here. Let's hope that lasts. I just have to tell you this. Whether you're into history or not, this is interesting. Basically, the guy that built this garden was called King Babur Shah. Guess who his grandson was? His grandson was Shah Jahan, the dude that built the Taj Mahal. So we're talking a, an, an impressive family, megawatt famous family. And when uh, Babur Shah built this garden and it has a series of waterfalls, um, beautiful trees, lush and green. He loves Kabul and he said, when I die, I want to be buried here. What a lovely place to be buried. And to think that he created it as well. It's really, really lovely. Just walking past the garden pavilion, which is a fancy building built in 1930, which was originally used to entertain royal guests. It's a lovely spot looking down over the garden. As you see the bullet holes on the walls. Oh, During the war, this building, this building and all the building around here all destroyed. This mosque was built for Shah Jahan, so King Baba's grandson, who obviously, as I said, built the Taj Mahal. Um, it's made of marble, costs a load. <laughs> obviously, these things always do. And basically, these little kids playing here, they're really cute. Um, it's suffered damage over time, it's been restored, and then you can see the, the bullet marks from fighting in 1993. So it's it's been through the wars literally, um, but it's still it's still there and it's it's very pretty. Up here we have the tomb of uh, Babur and his son and grandson. I, I'm quite surprised that the outside of the building looks quite plain to me, but all is revealed inside. I guess. Okay then, all is revealed inside. Shall we see? Oh wow. It's very detailed, isn't it? Look at this. Wow. So that's, I'm guessing, Babashal. 
Yeah. Right there. This is the king, the founder of Gurgaon Empire in India. He has a rather lovely um, tomb, doesn't he? May I go close? Yes. Sir. Look at this. Is it really? Wow. That is a tomb fit for a king, isn't it? What a lovely resting place. And you got this really intricate, like, lattice work around the edge. It's, it's amazing. It's like glistening in the light. I don't know if my camera's picking it up, but I can see lots of sparkles. Look at that. Son and grandson ran here. Oh, they're very simple, aren't they? I kind of, I like the simplicity of it, to be honest. Isn't it beautiful with the trees? I think this is, I think this is one of the nicest tombs I've been to, it just... That is nice. It's in a beautiful place and, I mean, his is fancy, but his, you know, son and grandson is very simple. It's got some trees. Look, it overlooks the mosque. So you've got these really aesthetically pleasing windows overlooking the mosque there. You're going to write in the book? Should we write in the book? Yeah. Okay. Beautiful and peaceful. Nice. Okay. Let's see this. And, uh, it's very nice handwriting. It's a mess, my handwriting. It's a mess. What do you mean? I like it. Do you? Yeah. I think I should have been a doctor. <laughs> Doctors always have handwriting like that. <laughs> <laughs> give, give you a prescription, you, wouldn't, you won't be able to read it. You'll probably get something that will change your hair instead of change your eyes. <laughs> Tasha Cool. I think they do a great job in here of uh, keeping it really clean and tidy and I really enjoyed that. It's nice, I think, when you come to a city to have a little bit of calm. I appreciate it. I particularly like gardens as well. Great, good choice, thank you very much. Welcome. We've come to Bacara for lunch. Here we go, that's sweet. Ooh, oh, salam. Lovely to meet you. Chito Rusty. <laughs> oh, that was a nice welcome. It's very dark in here. So, oh, look. Find out where we're going. Look at this. This is very smart, isn't it? It's this one. Right, I'm just following Mohammed John. Salam, salam. Thank you. Ah, oh, look, look at the lights. Oh, this is great. Nice. It's very shiny, isn't it? Yeah, it is. You guys like your shiny places? Yeah. Yeah. Because we, we have special guests. Ah. <laughs> Look at this. Look. Very fancy. Follow him, Zia. It's easy to spot Zia because he's got big trainers on. Just have to look for the shoes. Oh, look at this. This is lovely. Oh. Am I okay up here with the ladies? Where can we fit? We could film in the corner and if I if I sit this if I sit that side then I won't catch anyone. Yeah, look at this. It is rather lovely, isn't it? Gosh, it's beautiful in here. Very, very beautiful. The ceiling and the decoration are amazing. We are going for plain and simple because I've had a bit of a funny stomach. So I'm going for a hot and sour soup, which I reckon will be delicious, and some garlic mayo chips. Oh, thank you. I'm really going to miss these when I go home. I'm going to have to um, learn some of these recipes. So good. These drinks are so good. Mm. So refreshing, isn't it? 
Right, I'm gonna try the soup. I reckon this hot and sour soup will be delicious. What did you order? Kabli pulao. Again bread. Huh? Again bread masala. Bread masala for you. Yeah. You're gonna be very clever. Yeah. Very clever this man. Way, I am clever. Yes, this looks good. Mm. Oh. That is really nice. I like um, Bukhara. How many Bukharas have you got in Kabul there? Two. Two? We've been to both of them. Are they anywhere else in the country or just here? I don't really know. Don't you don't know? Well, the ones in Kabul are lovely. Oh, it's so good. Right, garlic mayo. I'm going to feel like I'm back home now. Sometimes you just need chips in your life, I think. When you have some cake? Mm -hmm. That's really good. It's another thing that surprised me. I mean, it's probably a stupid thing to say, but it did surprise me that um, Afghanistan is really, uh, or certainly the big cities like Kabul are really international. So it's very, very easy to find something that you like. I mean, the thing is, Afghan food is amazing. It's really, really tasty. But if you fancy a taste at home as well, it's no problem. Look at this. Oh, that's your brain masala. What's, what's that? What is that? Achar. This time it is not chutney. What is it? It is not chutney. It is achar. What is that? Achar. What's achar? Achar is brother of chutney. Muhammad John always says that everything is chutney. This one he said is the brother of chutney. Achar. Achar. His name is Achar. Achar. I know what it is. What flavour is it? Look at that. What do you do? What goes in there then? Oh, the bread. Okay, I'll have to try them. Yes, thank you. Thanks. It smells like broth almost. Mm. <laughs> I don't know what to make of that. I don't know what it is. It's like, it's nice. Whatever it is. <laughs> mm. Mm. Flowers are really good. I think you Afghanis know how to make this really well. Mm. But you can't be you can't beat chips with garlic mayo. One thing I've noticed here in Kabul is that it's a lot more relaxed than some of the other areas like Kandahar. Um, here we're in the family area and everyone's just relaxed and eating with their families. There's no screens blocking people off, uh, which I found really strange in Kandahar. Uh, I mean, you might as well eat at home, surely, get a takeaway. Um, here it's just lovely, just seeing families have a lovely time. Um, so, yeah, I, I really like Kabul. It's been great getting to know it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's lovely. That was just, oh my goodness, has it been raining? It's been raining. When did that happen? When did that happen? My goodness me. It's been raining. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> uh, it feels very much like England, home from home. I didn't expect it to be honest, I thought it would be hot and dusty and desert-like. But it's actually a really nice temperature here in Kabul. Not too hot, nice and chilled. And it's quite nice to see a bit of rain. Yes, yeah. We've come to Nodashaw Hill uh, in Kabul because this is where they have kite flying competitions. The first thing is, it's actually on a graveyard. Everybody's like sat amongst the graves. Good evening. Good evening. How are you doing? I'm all right, thanks. How are you? Are you? I'm very well. Where are you from? I'm from London. London, England. UK? Yeah, England. Nice. That's yeah. a nice country. 
it is. It's very like nice. Been I've been here. This is my ninth day. Well, I go home tomorrow. What is that? Beautiful. I'm, I'm going home on Friday. Where are you from? Canada. Ah, oh, that's another nice country. Beautiful. I would love to visit Canada. Of course. Yes. You're always welcome. Ah, uh, thank you. No, I, my, I'm just home. trying to understand how the competition works. Oh, whoever comes <laughs> first, they fight. <laughs> how do you know who wins? Whoever goes away. Huh? Whoever, whoever cuts off, who, this goes away, that's done. What do you mean whoever cuts off? Like falls down? Let's see these two are fighting. So they're fighting? Yeah, if you, whoever cuts off, they win. Whoever so, done. So you're flying away, yeah. you're flying away, and then what, one just falls? That's fail, That's the one loser. And Wow. Yeah. And can you make other people fall? How do you make them fall? No, you can't fall. Once fall. you fight them, you get to get you fight fall. them? Once, to... once you go close to them, you yeah. get connected to them, and then you oh, fight each other. You pull, 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 pull. Yeah. Like, look at him, my cousin. Hello. Hello. Concentrate. I think you're in a competition. <laughs> Don't lose your focus. <laughs> he's gonna, he's gonna lose the game. Yes. Big, 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 big. So far, he beat three guys. Did he? Which one is his then? He's I'm trying the to see where. The small one, right? The forest one. At the, at the top. The, the top one, all the way to the forest the one. one. Yeah, yeah. Hang on, I'm gonna get my phone out and see if I can zoom in. Sure. So he's right at the top. This is crazy. I'm learning about the. I thought you just went to a park and flew a kite, but apparently you have to cut people off and be, basically be the last man standing, I think. You can try. You want to no, try? I, I will lose his game. I'd be far too scared. <laughs> I'll, I'll film him, so. Sorry. I'll film him doing his thing, though. Let's see, I'm looking at the technique. Yeah. I'm, I'm watching the technique here. Very professional. Yeah. Let's see. I'm not entirely sure which one is his. Let's see if you can identify it. <laughs> it's quite difficult to identify. Is it, I think it's a blue one. Uh, look, look, look. Oh, it, there's a whole crowd watching. Loads of people standing around up here. I think I think I know his strategy. I think basically his kite he's just keeping it the highest. It's it's almost as high as an aeroplane. Everyone else is sort of buzzing around slightly lower. His is just really high and then I think no one can touch his because it's it's about to exit the Earth's atmosphere. I think that's it. I think that's it. Oh, look, this guy. Oh, what's happening? What's happening? It's all falling. It's all falling there. Is there like a national champion? Everybody's a champion. Everyone's a champion. But today I think this guy. This guy is the champion. His name is Waris. Waris? Yes. Waris is champion today. So you can give him a medal. <laughs> you have to give him something so, as a medal. Hang on a minute. Where's the kite gone? Cutting, cutting. The kite's gone. It's gone and went. Oh, oh, I, I missed the moment. He just flew off. <laughs> <today. laughs> it's gone. It's, gone. It's, it's very hard to identify whose is whose. Right. It's great fun. So is he gonna is he gonna fly another one? Yes. Yeah. I would be happy to buy a kite. Let's go buy them a kite. I doubt I'll be good luck though, but let's have a look. Oh, Ace of Spades. That, that Ace of Spades. That looks like a... Uh, what are we feeling for? He's testing it. He's testing the flex. <laughs> the flex. Chandos, what you say? If I'm going to buy a kite, do you need to choose a good one, Warris? You can tell him. He that. selected one this one. Oh, he likes this one. That was the first one he saw, though. Is that a bit of a worry? Because he helped him with giving an iPhone. But he was the first one that came out of the bag. He, he is the kite seller. He is he the kite seller. The well, one. hopefully it's a good one. Yeah? Okay, here we go. There we go, sir. Right, we're going to see how this one does. I, I won't take any change of the opposite. Right. 
I've got my money on this one now. Voila, you could wish it. That one looks excellent. Look at that one. If this one started to start flying, they're going to cut it off in the middle of the way. Oh. Because that's too big and everybody wants a piece of it. I see. Maybe it's easy to Yeah, that's the size. Right, right, right. So I made a good purchase there. That's what you're trying to tell me. So we're tying it very tight. I think Warris has done this before. Look. And we have the real holder here. That's a very important job. Oh, now look, 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 look. Right, he's got it there. And then he's... Right, I'm going to get out of the way because it's probably going to take my head off. Oh, and it's gone. And it's gone. That was very quick. That was very quick. Oh, that sign in the middle? That's the spade sign. I know. Ace the card. Yeah, a spade. That's I'm the spade. Ace of spades, right, come on, Morris. Come, Morris. Yeah, Morris, Morris, let's go. It's right there, it's right there. Let me see, let me just follow this. He's lying in wait to take people on. Yes. Look, look at it floating down. Ace of spades floating. It's all over the place. So you reckon this is the one that won't last very long? No, it could last big. 10 seconds. Ten, you reckon 10 seconds yeah, will be 10 over? Yeah, 10 to 20 seconds. Game yeah. over. Because there's so well, many kites, they will cut you yeah. okay. Once it goes up. This is the biggest one Whoa. now. That's in That's the biggest of all here yeah. right now. Warris and Megatron. Yeah, look, it looks like he's trying to land a plane with his arm signals. So you're saying 10 seconds, let's count. 10? No, I mean nine. 10 seconds since he starts fighting. Oh, oh. I mean, that wasn't even 10 seconds. Yeah, I think. <laughs> 10 seconds was, um, was probably quite generous. <laughs> that was really lovely to see. Thank you so much. Well done, almost, Boris. Well done. <laughs> well, that's the end of my Afghanistan series. I hope you enjoyed it. It's been a real pleasure being here, and um, there's been many surprises. And I've discovered a country that um, looks and feels totally different to what I thought it was based on what I've seen in the past. Um, so it's been great to come. And Fingers crossed, it will be a country that will start to grow um, after a few more changes are made. I want to conclude this series with some of my reflections from my time in Afghanistan. This has been one of the most challenging travel series I've filmed so far. Afghanistan is a land of deep contradictions. The country is often associated with war, the Taliban, and the struggle for women's rights. And whilst I didn't want to ignore these, I also wanted my series to be about the Afghan culture, which often gets overshadowed by these dominant narratives. Regarding the Taliban, I have seen myself that they have made strides to restore order on the streets. Locals confirmed they feel they can now go to work knowing they will return home. I heard that they are tackling the drugs trade, which claims many lives by destroying illegal opium fields. I was also told locally that they are working to reduce corruption, and I was given first-hand examples of some success stories. I can say that I felt they were working to keep me safe as a tourist, and I appreciated the security checks along the way. However, as you will have witnessed if you saw my video on women and followed my fundraising campaign, their ideas around extreme gender segregation is deeply concerning. Since returning home, they have banned women from showing their faces completely or even speaking outside, no first world country has ever succeeded with 50% of its population completely separated from the other 50%. And I do not believe this is a model that will raise this country up. Quite the opposite, in fact. If, however, with time, the Taliban were one day to embrace gender equality, something I believe some of their supporters want, I would be among the first to celebrate them in that effort. In closing, I want to focus on the people who make this country special. Local Afghans are amongst the warmest, most generous and hospitable people on the planet, and meeting them has been a real privilege. 
I hope with all my heart that their country can thrive in the future and more and more people go to visit them to truly understand what the Afghan culture is really about. Thank you to the people of Afghanistan for an incredible experience.